Here are the top reasons why you should and shouldn't buy the Xiaomi P1 4K Android TV. Now before that, this is a smart TV that'll cost you just under 2,500 ringgit or about $600, but here's everything you get with it. You get 4K resolution with NEMC technology, you get a beautiful bezel-less design, you get support for Dolby Vision and HDR10+, and finally, you have Android TV and hands-free Google Assistant experience, and a lot more. Let's start with the good first, the reasons why you should buy this TV. Number one, we have image quality and the visuals. This is a big one. The main reason why you would want to buy this TV are the visuals. You get a 4K UHD display with 94% DCI-P3 color gamut support. It's an IPS panel with a color depth of 8-bit plus FRC with support for Dolby Vision and HDR10+. The display is really good in terms of the colors, the contrast levels, and the black points. And the overall sharpness and image quality is very pleasing and immersive. However, keep in mind the viewing angles aren't really the best depending on how far away you are from the center axis. The blacks may look a little bit great, but overall image looks beautiful. This actually has 4K performance you would expect from higher end TVs with great depth. Since it also has support for Dolby Vision and HDR10+, the visuals are actually comparable to even the higher end TVs out there in the market. And I really couldn't wrap my head around the fact that this costs less than 2,500 ringgit. So if you're a user of things like Netflix or Apple TV, this does support the codec to give you the best possible HDR out of that. So consuming content within that realm will feel really great. Plus a video game and consoles like the PS5 or the Xbox that also supports HDR will look really stunning on this. It also does come with the MEMC technology, which I'm sure most of you know about, which is the reduction in the motion blur when you're consuming content. So especially if you're playing games, for example, it gives you a simulation of a higher refresh rate with less screen tearing and just more smoothness overall. On to the second reason why you should be buying this TV, the smart features. The Mi TV P1 runs off of Android TV 10 operating system, which feels very familiar to most Android TVs on the market. It's very simple and easy to get used to and familiarize yourself with. This simplifies your entertainment experience with over 400,000 movies, shows, and the ability to download over 5,000 different applications from the Google Play Store. It also comes with support for voice activation as well with Google Assistant, not only utilizing the microphone on the remote, but to give you a more hands-free experience, you also have uh, front-facing microphones built into the TV themselves. So they have a microphone that's able to hear you without the need for the remote wherever you're sitting in the room. You of course get the ability to Chromecast using different devices because it has Chromecast built in. Uh, so whether you're using Android, you can cast from that. Or if you're using uh, iOS and Apple like I was, you can install the application on there for free from the Play Store that allows you to do the same thing with your screen sharing. Lastly, we have the remote control with pretty much most of the features you need on there and the microphone and gives you access to shortcuts like Netflix and Prime Video. Not sure why they didn't have a YouTube button because I personally use YouTube more than Prime Video. I guess it depends on who's using it. I would like to have a YouTube button there instead because there's a lot of wasted button opportunity at the bottom. There's a bunch of buttons there. Just put a YouTube button there. Now, lastly, the final reason you'd want to buy this is the build and design given the price range. Now, like I said, for a sub 2,500 ringgit TV or $600, you, pretty much everything I talked about earlier just sounds amazing already. But adding on top of that and something that'll catch your attention right away is the build quality and the design of this TV. The TV has a really sleek and the type of design that you'd expect on something a little bit more expensive than this one. Very thin bezels offering a very high screen to body ratio. This of course helps deliver a more immersive and enjoyable experience. That aside, you also have a huge selection of IO ports present on here. Something you'd expect from a TV like this. You get HDMI 2.1, USB 2.0, AV, LAN, optical inputs, 3.5 mm audio jack, I could go on and on. One thing I didn't like about the design of the TV is that these IO ports, the panel for it is dead center at the back of the TV. I would kind of hope they move it to the edge so I can easily plug and unplug stuff. Uh, so this makes it a bit complicated, especially if you have it mounted like to the wall, reaching back there. And it's just something I, I didn't really like about it. Okay, enough of everything that's great about it. What do I really not like about it? The first and the main one is gonna be the sound quality. The sound quality on this was honestly the most underwhelming thing about the Mi TV. 
It's not that it's terrible considering the price range, but taking everything else we talked about into account, the beautiful visuals, the 4K, the Dolby Vision, and the HDR, the experience that you get with the thin bezels, the sound felt like a pretty big letdown. Now, yes, it does have support for Dolby Audio and DDS-HD, but really comparing it to the visual experience, the audio just doesn't tally up. It's almost like they're from two different TVs. Just the visuals are just so good and the audio is just not there. Now, to be fair, most TVs don't really have a very good sound system built in, uh, especially at the lower price range. Even some high-end TVs don't have really good sound. It's not that it doesn't get loud enough. It does get pretty loud. It's just that it's a bit tinny, very not full sounding. And lastly, it's lacking bass and it's very noticeable that it's lacking bass. So sometimes when there's dialogue and audio playing at the same time, the dialogue just gets drowned out by all this other sound. Another reason why you might not want to buy this is going to be if you're planning to game on this. Now hear me out, I went on and on about the 4K, the HDR, the MEMC technology, then why am I saying that you can't really game on this? All of that is still true. Your PS5 or your Xbox next gen consoles will look great on here, visually stunning. The main and the biggest problem you will face is going to be input lag. For those of you who don't know, input lag is how much time it takes from the button being pressed on your controller to it registering and you seeing it happen on your screen. The input lag on this is very noticeable, especially in games like Call of Duty that I was playing. I was playing Warzone on here, for example. The button registration felt uh, really delayed. Uh, even the looking around animation, looking left and right, it felt like I was like underwater or in space. Uh, very detached from the experience, very breaking the illusion of being connected to the game. And that's obviously because this is lacking a dedicated game mode. Like most TVs at the higher price ranges, to be fair, do have a gaming mode that allows you to reduce the input lag. This lacks that. So uh, obviously the input lag is very noticeable. No matter what game I tried, I could feel it a little bit. Some games more than others, but it was definitely there. Now, of course, the MEMC technology helps with the smoothness visually, but that doesn't really help with the input lag. So if you're looking specifically for a gaming TV at a tighter budget, this isn't for you. So who's it for? If you want a TV that has beautiful visuals, stunning design, and all the smart features you could hope for, then this is a great TV for you. Given obviously the fact that you have your own sound system set up and you don't really care that much about sound, this is a beautiful TV. However, if you're looking for an all-in-one TV that has sound for you and the ability to use it as a gaming TV and you'll be gaming console a lot on here, this is definitely not a recommendation I can give you. Anyway, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, a like would be appreciated. Let us know down in the comments if you want more content just like this and I'll see you again in the next video. Until then, 